I love it when people are telling me they're reading through the Song of Songs for the very first time. Um, but I'm also a little worried because it's a challenging book. Uh, for one thing, it's, it's all in poetry. In fact, 40% of the Bible is in poetry. And um, so most people think of themselves as pretty much knowing how to read a story or a history, but you get a little bit deer in the headlights when it comes to poetry. One thing I like to remind people is actually you experience a lot of poetry every day, and it's exactly the kind of poetry we have in the Song of Songs. It's popular music, which is mainly love songs, which is mainly what we have in the Song of Songs. So um, I like to encourage people to enjoy the poetry. And um, I do think it helps to know what kind of literature uh, any book in the Bible is. And in this case, it's a collection of love songs. And um, I think when you say that, people realize uh, they have a certain expectations that go with that. Um, they don't exactly expect um, uh, a history with a lot of names and dates. In fact, if you think about you know, there are some pop songs where um, you know the name of one of the people. I mean, it's Luann or it's Louie Louie or whoever it is. But there are lots of popular songs that's talking about love. You don't know exactly who it is, but you can still enter into the story because it's a love song. So um, I think when we come to the Song of Songs with some of those kinds of expectations, um, it, it really helps. It's not a long book. So I encourage people to read it through pretty rapidly and then go back and read it again, maybe read it a couple times pretty rapidly, and then go back and um, try to uh, study it a little bit more closely. It's a short enough book that you can definitely read it, read it again, read it another time. Um, I also encourage people not to um, treat this exactly like a play where you have to know exactly who's speaking at every moment. Um, be a little flexible with it. A love song is like that. You don't necessarily always know who's speaking to whom, and you can go with the flow a little bit. And I, I think this book um, is like that. Another thing that we always have to think about with the Song of Songs is what is the connection of this book to Solomon? Because it starts by saying the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now, what does that mean, which is Solomon's? Does that mean Solomon wrote this. Well, that's possible because he was a brilliant, had a brilliant mind, wrote lots of poetry, lots of proverbs, lots of songs. The Bible tells us that. Um, it's a little tricky to think about because here is a book with an exclusive relationship between a man and a woman, and that's not the way Solomon lived his life. So um, maybe he wrote this early on when he was more sensible. Maybe this he's speaking with the voice of wisdom after a lot of sexual escapades that end in a lot of um, disappointment and heartbreak and, and trouble for Solomon's house and for Israel. But I, I think we also um, could see this as being kind of in the style of Solomon. And I think one of the things that happens in this book, it's a little tricky, but here is a country couple and one of the ways that they elevate the style of their love relationship is by using courtly language and comparing things to the royal court of Solomon. It's kind of like um, kind of like the way that people today are really fascinated with royal weddings in Great Britain. And they may even have some elements of what they do that's patterned after that or reflects that. They're not calling themselves the king and the queen of England or the prince and the princess, but they're um, elevating their own relationship by some of the highest ideals of human culture. And I think that may be what's happening um, here in the Song of Songs. Then here, here's one other thing that I like to encourage people in in the Song of Songs, and that is to read the book with bifocal vision. On the one hand, this is a human level relationship, lots of details about their family situation and about the natural beauty around them. And a lot of things happen in their relationship. There's a courtship and there's a fight and they get reconciled and all those human level things. But because this is set as one story in the bigger story of God's love for his people in Jesus Christ, which, incidentally, from beginning to end, the Bible presents as a marriage relationship. I mean, Adam and Eve, that's the trailer for the romance of redemption, that love relationship between Adam and Eve when they become one flesh. Um, and by the time you get to the end of the Bible, you've got the wedding reception, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And somewhere in the middle of that, the Apostle Paul is talking about earthly marriages in Ephesians chapter 5. And he says, oh, I'm, I'm not even really talking about marriage. I'm talking about Christ and the church. Because when we talk about the human level love relationship in its ideal form, we really are talking about the love of all loves. 
So I like to encourage people to find the love of loves, the love of Jesus Christ in the Song of Songs. Those, those are a few, I think, good tips for understanding and putting into practice this great book of the Bible.